All right, good morning everyone and welcome to this ICT basics video. In this edition of the ICT basics video, I'm going to discuss order block limit order entries. Um, Michael talks about, about this and uh, it, is a, it is a pretty good way to enter in the market when you see an order block. Um, okay guys, so I will just give you an example that I worked with last night. Um, just turn on my executions. So as you can see, I entered in on a limit order here and here, both at 620. Stop went one point above that high, so the stop was up here. And let me go ahead and, and describe to you why. So as the market made a high here at 0450, when I saw that the market made this green candle and then traded below it, um, although that is kind of a questionable order block, it nevertheless is an opposite colored candle after an extended move higher. Um, and you can also see that there was a fair value gap or buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency sitting just below which um, if price trades through it can invert and become an inverted fair value gap, right? So and, and, uh, entering in on an order block stop looks like this. When you see that the market trades below that first green candle, what you want to do is you can look at two different price points to place a limit sell order quickly in the market. Number one, you can, you can go for the mean threshold. So I would have been filled on that as well. That was 23 spot 25 okay but if you want to make sure that you are filled or you're more likely to be filled on the order you just put it right at the low right as the market trades below that opposite colored candle um, you just put a limit a limit sell order or a limit buy order right there now the market is not always going to come back and tag your order which is can be a disadvantage of using a limit order but it, it many oftentimes it is going to come back and tag you so it's a way to save on a few points um, okay so for example let's talk about where you could have done that as, as well so let's see you have a black candle here that's trading into a prior black candle so if the market comes back to it uh, that should be a propulsion block um, a black candle trading into a black candle on an up move so let's say that as you see the market trade above this black candle you immediately put a limit buy order right there at 590.50 the market comes back tags you goes higher okay you could also put it at the open of that candle that would have been filled as well but that's a little bit riskier okay if you put if you put it at the mean threshold of that black candle you did get filled yes but you won't get filled on every instance of that so that's why I just put it at, right at the higher the low um, it's not going to fill you every time that you pull this trick, guys. I'm just telling you. So, for example, you trade above this black candle, you needed to be on a stop order or market order. But oftentimes it is going to fill you. Um, this order block right here, you did not get filled. The market just went straight down. Uh, if you were quick with this green candle, you got filled on a limit order uh, on a sell. Didn't get filled on that one. So... Another one, guys, oftentimes how I like to use these is right. Uh, if you see that the market is kind of being in a high resistance mode, it's it's uh, doing a lot of these stop punts, it's, it's not moving cleanly, then you're more likely to be filled on these. So the market trades below that green candle there. As it trades below, limit order goes in the market at the low of that candle. That came in at 80.25. You take some drawdown, but the market ends up going lower. So these are order block limit order entries they're oftentimes going to be right um, these market structure shift order blocks are the ones right at the top or bottom of a swing but again guys if the market is moving fluidly if it's moving with a purpose in a low resistance mode you're just you're not even gonna it's not gonna come back and tag you at all so I'll, I'll make a separate video on entering in on a stop order so as opposed to in entering in on a limit order you can also enter in on a stop order um, all right, so another example here, uh, the market trades below this five minute candle, green candle, order goes at, uh, sell order comes in at the low, you get filled, it goes lower. Um, again, sometimes like here, just goes straight down, not gonna fill you at all. Didn't fill you there on this, on this instance. Um, it did, however, fill you, well, yeah, so. Market trades above here, order goes there. As you see the market trading back down, you get filled, it goes back up. So 
Guys, this is an option for you to save on some points, and it's one of the ways that you can use an order block. Um, even if you can't properly identify an order block, well, you know it's just an opposite colored candle, right? So it, if it's just an opposite colored candle, oftentimes um, you know that if it's paired with an inefficiency, so if you see it form a fair value gap, there's displacement with it. Uh, it's, it's really moving against that candle. Like, for example, here, you can be confident that that black candle is an order block, a five-minute order block. Why? Because the market displaced strongly against it. In fact, all four of these become a 20-minute order block as the market traded against it. So how do I know that for a fact? Well, because the market really displaced higher. It's not always going to be the case, guys. Sometimes you're going to get candles. You're like, is that really an order block? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but it's an opposite colored candle in, in, in any event. So just at a minimum, just call it an opposite colored candle. You do want to see displacement, though, right? You don't want to just see barcoding. If you see just barcoding, it's probably not an order block. Um, but anyways, guys, I like to, to use these uh, uh, limit order entries. Again, I will show you an example. Okay, so that green candle right there, I got filled right there, and then I ended up covering down here at 601 spot 5 for a 19 and a half point trade, so right there. Okay, and then I left one on to see if it wanted to run lower. It did not. So anyways, guys, are you going to be tagged every time that the market fills an order block? If you if you put in a limit order like this, are you going to be tagged every time? No. Sometimes the market is just going to move cleanly against you uh, or in the direction that you, you're intending, and you'll just have to hit it, hit it at the market, frankly. Um, but that's something that you'll have to be watching in live price action. If the market does not seem to you like it's it's going to want to come back and tag you, you're just going to have to enter in at the market or on a stop order. But if the market is, a, in, a, is in a high resistance mode, it's chopping, um, it's in time distortion basically where it's, it's not the right time for it to make the move, you probably are going to be tagged in on a limit order for an order block. Okay, guys, uh, in this video, I covered limit order entries on order blocks. Oftentimes, these are going to be your market structure shift order blocks or the ones that are at the top or bottom of a swing. Um, and so you can enter in on a limit order at the low or the mean threshold of that order block. Although, be careful with the mean threshold because, again, you might not be tagged in. Uh, the market will not always come back and tag your limit order. And if it does not tag your limit order, you'll either have to enter in on a stop order or at the market. Okay, guys, in this video, we covered order block limit order entries.